questions that need an answer now, but I do want to make a few comments on the climate crisis in light of the COVID crisis. It's been said by many commentators that the COVID pandemic is only a slight foretaste of the kind of disruption to society and economics that we can expect as we move further down the road to catastrophic climate change. There's certainly many lessons for us to draw from it and what will work for climate and the far-reaching radical action that we need. We now have billions of people effectively in lockdown across the globe. We've dramatically reduced road and air transport and we're seeing reductions in CO2 emissions never previously recorded in history. But this gigantic fall will at most lead to reduction in annual levels of between 4 to 6 percent. The International Energy Agency says the world will use 6 percent less this year, equivalent to using the entire energy demand of India. Carbon Brief shows us that emissions will fall by 4 to 8 percent, somewhere between 2 and 3 billion tonnes of warming gas. That's between 6 and 10 times larger than during the last global recession. To quote one scientist, we are still emitting more than 80% of our pre-COVID CO2 emissions. That's a massive number, so personal behaviour isn't really going to fix the carbon emission problem. We need systemic change in how energy is generated and transmitted. So one lesson we should take from the crisis is that a climate policy that rests overwhelmingly on personal behaviour and the changes in personal behaviour to tackle the greatest crisis in human history will fail because the issue with climate and CO2 is, not, is systemic and not the behaviours of ordinary people. So again, I say to you, to Fianna Fáil and especially the Green Party, an emphasis on carbon taxes aimed at personal individual behaviour is a massive error and will waste the time and th that we have left to avert cl uh, cl catastrophe in climate. The other lesson, of course, is the over-reliance on the free market as providers of key public services. This can turn out not to be just costly mistakes, as in broadband, cervical checks, school or hospital building, but when you hit a major crisis like this pandemic, it can be fatal for many. From the failures of nursing homes to a dysfunctional two-tier health service to the failure of childcare provision, it's clear that reliance on market or international investors will not give us the kind of services we need, either in good times or indeed in this emergency. Our climate policy continues to place its hope in private companies and investments in offshore wind energy. We will remain dependent on their prospects for profit in the years to come. The seven proposed offshore wind projects mentioned in the last month are very welcome, but there is no mention or no vision of a state-led investment programme that can rationally plan the scale and in the timing needed for the transition away from fossil fuels. Similarly, with the announcement of the Just Transition Report and its 11 million investment fund, it's meant to deliver just transition for workers and communities devastated by ESB and border Mona closures. But in the meantime, workers continue to be thrown on the scrap heap, treated abysmally by their state employer, and this fund will at best be a sticking plaster over the abandonment of many thousands of people, pensionable jobs, in favour of private industry working, lower pay, precarious contracts, and with, of course, a coat of greenwash. There is no vision of what just transition really means, no ambition to use that skilled workforce in a state-led renewable energy project. This is not surprising. For the last four years, this government has obstructed legislation that would curtail fossil fuel use and exploration. You have supported plans for LNGs and you continue to parrot, even in the teeth of the evidence from science, that gas is a transitional fuel. And like other deputies, I've been receiving emails from climate campaigners urging me to support a programme for government that accepts and acts on the best climate science. And I assume that they're hoping that it will give an impetus to talks between Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael and the Green Party. If these parties do arrive at a programme, it will probably mention climate more times than any other previous government programme. It will be full of inspirational rhetoric. It will tick a lot of boxes and may fool some climate activists for some of the time, but it will not deliver the far-reaching radical action that's needed. Both Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael are ideologically committed to neoliberal policies. Both are the architects of inequality in housing and in health. Both are defenders and champions of the fossil fuel industry and the private investment interests. They'll never deliver the systemic change that the COVID crisis has shown us that we need. So if we want to see a science-led response on climate change, not one led by economics proposing as climate science, we need to look elsewhere and build a movement that is required for climate change and to change the system and not just change the climate.